When Cliff told me about this project and what people think should be done with these spaces that we call slums, I realized that the general principles of planning just don't seem to apply. Well, I mean, let's be realistic. You're not going to solve every problem there is. But if you start off with the premise that ultimately the solution's going to have to come from the slum dwellers. We've been so fortunate to meet an architect from India. She's got this unique ability with five different languages to be an architect but sit down in a room full of slum and pavement dwellers and get into a discussion about what their needs are, what their aspirations are, and bring other kinds of expertise into the thinking about how to create from the bottom up and the top down a better planned and executed. It's one of my dreams is to not categorize this kind of work as social design. Then it becomes this other thing that you do. It's not this other thing to do. It is what should be done. For me, social responsibility means social justice. I believe that humans have the right to live in a dignified place, beautiful shelter, all the things socially sensitive design can provide. We have to be able to, to accept that a large majority of the slum is going to stay the way it is. Mahila Milan and the National Slum Dwellers Federation have done an incredible job of raising these issues to a level that the municipality can understand and respond to. Spark and NSDF are already doing amazing work. The idea is not to go in there to disrupt or to change anything, but to sort of help propel them. It's a mammoth task. It's interesting, no? Like we're going to be taking a set of tools and applying it to a very complex environment and can, can you imagine cracking this problem? I think in terms of you know what we're working in is this social impact design, design thinking. What, what is the social impact of, of that design? <laughs>